All right, guys. What to do? It's your boy Exit coming to you guys with another video. And um, recently um, I've been doing fairly well with a lot of traction on YouTube. I really, 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 really appreciate it because, like I said, one of my goals for 2021 is to get monetized. Um, I gained a significant amount of you know, subscribers. A lot of people were liking the video. It reached a decent amount of people, and I'm very excited about it. But I normally don't get a lot of comments, but this time I did. So a lot of people were talking to me. A lot of people were asking me questions. And it's like a lot of people were asking me, how do you get into investing? Like, how do you start? So that's what I'm going to do a video on today. I'm going to show you guys how you can start to invest. And I'm going to also tell you guys how I started to invest. No, just what did I do? And what brokers I choose? And how did I get there? What made me choose? I got all these questions today because that's what you guys want. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Most definitely like this video and let's get into it. All right, you guys want to learn how to invest. You guys want to start making your money work for you. You want to learn the ins, the outs, the tricks of the trade. I got you. I do. And um, first and foremost, congratulations. You're moving in the right direction. <laughs> Believe it or not, a lot of people just really started to truly, truly, truly get into investing with the pandemic. So just you starting, making that conscious decision, you're going in the right direction. But I know what you think. How do I start? How do I pick stocks? Where do I even buy stocks? Uh, I know some people are buying stocks through Cash App. Of course, a lot of people know of Robinhood, but you don't know of any of the other brokerages. Now, would I recommend Robinhood? I would. Now, hear me out. Is Robinhood good? Depending on what you said, what, what your definition of good is. Um, I would say Robinhood is good for this reason personally. It's very, very, very user friendly. It's very easy to understand, very easy to navigate, very simple. So for that reason, Robinhood you know, is a pretty decent one to start with. Not gonna stop with you. Now, once you move up in the brokerages, believe it or not, my favorite brokerage is M1 Finance. I like M1 Finance. I really, 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 really do. All right, so pretty much the reason why I like M1 Finance, it boils down to this. When I first started, um, I didn't understand how much money to put in stocks. You see what I'm saying? Like everybody said, hey, no more than 5%. Hey, no more than 3% of your portfolio. And I'm sitting there like, okay, all right, okay, okay, all right. But then you start to invest and you realize my portfolio is literally uneven. Like, I don't know, no, I'm, I'm you're, you're going to just start off by just buying your shares and you don't know how many you should buy to keep it under this percent. And that's why I end up liking M1 Finance. In M1 Finance, you can create you a pie. You can put those stocks that you want in, put it at the percentages and just deposit your money in. And it's going to split that money evenly to make sure your pie is that exact percent. And to me, that is perfecto especially when i was first starting off because i didn't know how many shares i want to buy i didn't know i didn't want to overdo my portfolio i want to make sure i was well diversified because that's what everybody's telling you diversify 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 and it sounds good until you realize hey if i diversify okay i'm gonna get stocks i'm gonna get the savings account i'm gonna do this but they you know they make they, they want you to make sure that you don't overdo in one category but in your portfolio for the actual stocks, you're just like, how do I even it out? Because it's just, if I buy 20 of these and I buy 20 of these, but this stock is cheaper compared to that one, it's gonna start, you know, shifting. Yeah. So, M1 Finance became real clutch. I like them. But unfortunately, I did leave M1 Finance. Not because it's a bad brokerage. I left M1 Finance because I moved up in trading. Fidelity. I wanted to do options. M1 doesn't have 
options. So I end up transferring my account to Fidelity, which is an amazing brokerage. Strongly recommend, I, I currently have it. Now, how do you, I know what you all want it. How do you pick stocks? How do I know what I supposed to pick? How you go about looking stocks up? I got you. It is not hard looking up stocks, but there's several ways to do it. Um, me personally, when I first started off, what I personally did, like I said, you don't have to do this. I'm just knowing I'm gonna give you what I did and then things that you can do also. What I did was I looked up people who had portfolios and you know pretty much the type of portfolio I can envision for myself. At the time, I was looking at Andrew Jick, who's another YouTuber. I was looking at um, Mr. Wonderful portfolio, and they were having these stocks because they like dividends. And at first, I was, I'm like, hey, I want them dividends, dividend, dividend, dividends. But I didn't know what stocks had dividends. I didn't know what stocks offered dividends. I didn't know how to begin to look it up. So I started to take some of the stocks out of their portfolio that I like, like Johnson & Johnson like Exxon Mobil, like AT&T. And that's how I started picking my stocks. But as time progressed, I realized there's another way you can look up stocks. Several actually. Um, we're gonna take Robin for instance. If you're on Robinhood, you have categories. You have ETF category, where you can just, it will give you a list of ETFs. You have daily movers. You have the 100 most popular stocks. And that's why I started my journey when I was in Robinhood. I went for the most popular stocks, scrolled that list, took each one of the ticker symbols that I thought that I may be interested in, and typed into Google and went to Yahoo Finance, looked up the information. It should tell you the dividend yield, the dividend payout, what you know, what month they pay out. YouTube, I say YouTube. Yahoo Finance can give you all the information. And if Yahoo Finance is not, you no, know, it doesn't tickle your fancy, you can also go to dividends.com, which is another way for you to look up the information on, to, you know, whatever stock you deem it to be and look up the dividend information. Uh, like I said, I will leave both of those websites in the description for you guys so you can click on them and you know, get the browser. Okay, M1 Finance. With M1 Finance, like I said, they, M1 Finance is just great. <laughs> With M1 Finance, they have what they call pies. Inside these pies, you can look up some of the pies that mimic people. For instance, they have Warren Buffett pie. Pretty much the pie consists of all the Warren Buffett stocks. If you want to just believe in Warren Buffett fully, you can pick that pie and it'll start investing in those stocks that he has. It has the Bill Gates. It has, um, many variations of pies you know you want to be conservative you want to be aggressive you want to focus on income you want to focus on retirement you can pick different types of pies to fit that type of investing if you just want to invest but you don't want to learn about the ins and out i still would recommend m1 finance because you can just get one of these you know just simple pie for long-term retirement just keep putting money in it and it's going to disperse it evenly evenly Great way, great way. That's if you don't want to learn the ins and out, you just want to start investing for your fruits. I still recommend M1 Finance. So there are many, 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 many stocks out there. I don't want you guys to think that you can just you know, look at my portfolio and just, oh, okay, everybody got these same stocks. It's just these, there are a lot of stocks out there, a lot. But like I said, you will have to literally just do your due diligence. Trust me, there's a lot of due diligence that need to be done if you really want to just invest but for everybody who's trying or at least getting your feet wet like i said just for simpleness i would still recommend m1 finance due to just how easy you the user face is now if you want to go for just learning about stocks and just investing without really just learning about stocks m1 finance now if you're just talking about hey i want to Brokers that I can just grow with that has pretty much all the good features and it's a major bit Fidelity is what I like, but you can also pick Charles Schwab TD Ameritrade Vanguard 
these are all great ones. Now, this is the main thing I want to stress for everybody who's beginning in investing. If you are beginning in investing, before you do anything else, figure out how much you want to invest. And I know what you're thinking, well, I'm just going to do a little money here and there as I get it. That is a great thing. But if you're going to do, you no know, investing like that, if you, if you know you're not going to invest over $6,000 in any given year, so I mean for the entire year of 2021, if you know you're not going to invest more than 6000 start your Roth. Now, Robinhood does not offer Roth accounts, but I'm going to tell you what a Roth is. A Roth is a tax-free account. So, scenario here. Say you buy 100 shares of Tesla. Boom, you big ball, 100 shares of Tesla. Okay, say Tesla just literally take off in like six months. So now your 100 shares, which was like, that's just hypothetical people. Let's just say it worth $100, right? Say in six months, Tesla shares jumped up, now it's $200, but you have 100 shares. You can realize that gain. Now, in a regular account, you get that same gain, just as in a Roth. But when it comes time to take it out, once you sell those shares, you, you realize they gain, which means you have to pay taxes on that. But in your Roth account, once you sell and you realize they gain, no taxes. That's what that's what made Roth's account so important. Whatever you put in, whatever you make in the account, tax free. But you can only invest six thousand dollars a year into the account. Now, this is what people do. Include myself. Say you investor, you want to really get into it. The beginning of the year, like right now, for me personally, I haven't invested any money into my regular account. My first priority for this year is to max out my Roth. Once I max out my Roth, I then will start investing into my individual account. Why is that? Any money in my Roth tax free. I want to make sure I max that out before I do anything in my individual account because I will have to pay taxes on things in my individual account. Now, you cannot trade options in Roth accounts, but tax free, taxes, options, screw them options, tax free. So like I said, yeah, this is pretty much how you can pretty much get started into it, how I got started, some of the key things to look out for, and pretty much what I'm going to do for you guys, like I said, in the description. I'm going to list five brokerages that I think are good. And I'm going to put in parentheses what I think they're best at. So that way you can take your guess and you know, pick which one you, you know you would like. I also will leave in there a couple websites that I use to look up ticker symbols. Ticker symbols is pretty much the stock symbol so you can look them up. For instance, Apple is AAPL. That's the ticker symbol for Apple. I'm going to leave those in the description so that way you can start looking at companies. I will do an update on this video probably within a week and I would you know just break down how to read the stock because a lot of people just type it in but you don't really understand it. I will tell you guys how to understand the dividend information if you want to be a dividend investor. I will break all that down for you. Trust me. I have another video for me. But in the description for now, this one I'm going to break down. Top five brokerages, a list of accounts, well, website that I use so I can look up ticket symbols, and also down there will be a button that you can click and subscribe to my channel. So make sure you check that out. <laughs> but I hope this helps you guys understand know, how to pick a brokerage. You no. Know, uh, just a little insight on those different brooches and just how to go about picking stocks and things of that nature so like i said we're going to get into the more details of each individual stocks next video but if you have any questions leave me in the comment i got you guys i'm going to answer i may be a little delayed in the daytime because i do go to work at like seven and i don't get off to about seven <laughs> 
and I do work six days a week, so leave them in there. And like I said, I might see it while I'm at work, and I might not respond immediately, but I will respond. Any questions you have, I got you. But hope this guy really, no, I hope this really helped you guys. But uh, that's it for me. It's your boy XM, and I'm out.